I think it's safe to say I have recently become a Denis Villeneuve enjoyer. He's been responsible for some modern sci-fi classics like Arrival, Blade Runner 2049, and most recently, the ongoing adaptation of Dune. When the Lego rumor mill churned up the idea that we'd get an actual set based on his work, it was definitely one of those things that felt way too good to be true. Uh, but here we are. So let's take a closer look at this delightful surprise of a set. Thanks to LEGO for sending me this early to review, you'll be able to pick one up for yourself starting on February 1st. At this point, most of you have probably seen this set already since it was revealed eons ago back in October of last year. All sorts of videos have been floating around showcasing its many incredible functions, so I won't make you sit through that again. Rather, we're going to focus on the set's minifigures, which I imagine will be the highlight for a good many people. The set includes eight of them, and they are quite the treat. Up first, we have the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Tomothy Chalamet himself, uh, or Paul Atreides. Maybe this one was a bad one to start with. Uh, I think it's the hair piece here that's throwing me off a bit. Let me know if there's an existing hair piece that you think would have worked better. We do get a new torso print for the figure though, which is really nice. It's his royal robes rather than the still suit he wears most of the film. Since, as you'll see, the set includes plenty of other still suits, the variety is greatly appreciated. There's also a double-sided head with a serious expression and then a more happy one. Simple though he is, Duncan Idaho works great for me. The figure makes use of the relatively new medium tan skin tone, which works nicely and is always great to get more of. No printing on the legs, but I'm not too bummed about it since everything else looks perfect to me. He also gets a double-sided face print. Next we get Leto Atreides. Now Oscar Isaac is a very, very, very beautiful man. That's just how it is. I do not envy the graphic designer tasked with capturing his likeness in minifigure form. I think having the minifigure here in person, it does look better than the pictures I had seen in the early reveals, I will say that. Even so, his hair needs that lovely salt and pepper look that I just don't think Lego does. The beard is a tough one too, as even that small beard element, you know, the one that they use on Santa and such, on him it would just feel a bit overkill, but just use the printing doesn't quite do it justice either. Oh well. The still suit, however, is absolutely awesome. I love everything about this costume. Also sporting the still suit is Dr. Lee at Kynes. She's pretty unmistakable with those bright blue eyes and that great hairpiece. The inclusion of the dark tan cape is a really nice addition as well. Notice how it's been cut at the bottom too. A nice little detail. She holds two maker hooks for riding a sandworm. Getting multiple still suits in this set is a huge plus, honestly, as it will save you from going out and buying multiple sets to recreate certain scenes from the movie. She's got a really nice alternate face print with the mask of the still suit. The third figure with the same still suit is Chani, again making use of the great bright blue eyes characteristic of the Fremen. She has a dark tan scarf and wields a white Chris knife. The hairpiece isn't perfect, but is enough to convey who the minifigure is. Chani also has an alternate face with the mask. The last three figures in my eyes are really special. Lady Jessica looks spectacular, completely done up in pearl gold. This outfit is the one she wears when first arriving on Arrakis, and I don't think the designers could have done a much better job than this. The costume really conveys this sense of mystery, power, and royalty just as it does in the movie. Lego's also gone ahead and included an extra hairpiece to match up with her alternate face. Always a greatly appreciated extra. Lego has also gone all out in designing Gurney Hollick, War Master for House Atreides. He gets some incredible armor that does a great job of matching his on-screen appearance. You've got a new torso print, new leg print, and even extra printing on the armor piece too. And if you were wondering, that lovely torso print certainly does continue beneath the armor. And then we get to Baron Harkonnen. Wow, we've not seen a minifigure like this before. That's a single crazy Lego starched fabric piece, complete with some sweet printed details on the front. I was very curious to see if there was printing beneath that, and there isn't. Since you'd never see it, I suppose we can't really be too upset about it. And although the Baron never finds himself on board an ornithopter, I'm so glad he's been included in this set. I know I like to go off on LEGO's over-reliance on licensed themes and IP products these days, but there's no denying it's an awesome feeling when they take something that you enjoy and make an amazing set out of it. I'd say there is a 99% chance we will never see another Dune set, so to have gotten as many figures as we did here is probably the best we could ask for. But anyway, that's all I've got for this one. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. Have yourself a great life, and I'll see you later.